to go through. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's just you. It's plain and simple. Joseph, Jeremiah was sanctified before he cleaned out of his mother's womb, but that didn't stop the devil from tempting him. And when, when God formed you and called you to be his own, everything that you go through in this life is to perfect what God has put in you. Everything. Even your jobs. If you're slowful, then he'll put you in a job where you've got to be there all the time. Or they stop darkening your hours. If you don't want to do certain things, then he'll put you in a job and make you do what he called you to do. And you thought it was about the job. It's not about job. It's about God forming you and making you. Yes. Sister Bono worked on her job. As a respiratory therapist, Sister Mona was there ministering to this patient. And I, they probably it was sick of Sister Mona because every time they come in, she was in there praying with the patient. That was where God was molding her. She just didn't show up at Holy Cross. God put her in that position so he could use her for his glory. So wherever God puts you, that's where God is shaping you into what he called you to be. You just didn't show up here on this job. So no wonder Satan is trying to mess with our jobs. You didn't just show up there. God put you there for a reason. You are there for the glory of God. Read, brother. Then Joseph could not refrain himself uh -huh. before all of them that stood by him. And he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. Now Joseph was <clears throat> in the king's palace where he'd been in prison, and because of his wisdom and because God was with him, God put him over everything in the palace because God was with him. And now here's the time for his brothers to find out what God did. And he'd already told them this in a dream. He told his brother, this is, I'm going to be over you. You're going to be under me, and I'm going to be way up here over you, and you're really going to need me. And now it came to pass. And here is Joseph talking to his brothers. Come on. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Mm -hmm. Doth my father yet live? Is my father living? Mm -hmm. And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled in, at his presence. They thought that man was dead. <laughs> come on. And Joseph said unto his mm -hmm. brethren, Come near to me. Come here. I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold whom in the Egypt. you sold in the Egypt. Come on. Now therefore, mm -hmm. be not grieved. Don't be upset. Nor angry with yourselves. And don't be angry with yourself. That ye sold me hither. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. God did send me before you mm -hmm. to preserve life. Look at that. Look what God did. And look at the integrity of Joseph. And, and he said, now, uh, I'm Joseph, your brother. The one you carried through the bill. And, and, and now... Don't be greedy. Don't be upset. Don't be sorry that you bought me here. Guess what? Look, you, that you sold me hither for God sent me before you. All oh, it was all in God's plan for Joseph to suffer likewise. Yes. Isn't it amazing? We we just have to say thank you, Jesus. Joseph just had to say thank you, Lord. I didn't know it was going to work out like this, but Joseph 
trusted God. He trusted God. So read verse 5 again and 6. Now therefore, mm -hmm. be not grieved, mm -hmm. nor angry with yourselves, mm -hmm. that ye sold me hither. Mm -hmm. For God did send me before you to preserve life. To preserve life. Come on. For these two years mm -hmm. hath the famine been in the land, mm -hmm. and yet there are five years mm -hmm. in the which there shall neither be hearing nor harvest. Mm -hmm. And God sent me before you Come on now. to preserve you a posterity in the earth mm -hmm. and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Okay, God. Now here, his brothers should be astonished. Mm -hmm. Look what this man went through to get where he is now. He had to suffer. Yes. It didn't mean that God wasn't going to do it. But he had to be in prison, in the pit, called a, rap a rapist. But look at him now, working in the king's palace. Read verse 7. Or which one is next, brother? Number eight. Okay, read for eight. So now it was not you that sent me in. It wasn't you. But God. Jesus, look at God. You think you're the reason why I'm in this situation? You don't have that much power. Mm. Kind of like, you don't have enough power to stop a child of God when he believes in God. Amen. It's, there's no power stronger than a believer's power when they stand steadfast on the word of God. Amen. So he just told his brother, you didn't send me here. But God used your hands, your mouth to push me forward to where I am now. Mm. And we just have to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Didn't know I was going to go that way, but thank you. I ended up in the palace. Thank you, Lord. I was in prison. Thank you, Lord. I was in the pit. Thank you, Jesus. It was God that set me here. Jesus. Hallelujah. So you never underestimate the power of God. God can do anything. And if you get in a believer's way, you're going to get run over. Amen. Because all they see is opportunity. All they see, you know, either you get with me or move aside so I can run with Jesus. Yes. Either get with me or move Amen. out of my way so I can follow my God. Hallelujah. Because if it was not for God, I would not be here. Amen. So he said that, and God sent me to preserve you. And then on the eighth verse say, now it was not you. And them brothers felt bad too. Oh my Lord, we did. He's going to cut our heads off. He's in here working in the king's palace. He's got authority to kill us. What are we going to do now? So now, it was not you that sent me here. It was not me. And it was not even yourself. It was the anointing of God upon your life. But God sent me here. So I could preserve life. God did that. So in the word of God, from Genesis, what we just read, to Revelation, it does not change. What God said in the beginning, or whoever wrote the beginning, didn't know the one that wrote the ending. But they all come together as one Bible, 66 books. Amen. And each one of those books is the word of God. Yes. Some were farmers. Some were thieves. Some were cowards. But God used each and every one of them to write the word of God. Yes. Some were written by poets. 
Some were written by philosophers. They were written by fishermen and shepherds. But they all came together yes. as the word of God. Yes. And revelation cannot come. That's a quote against Genesis. And Genesis does not speak right, against right. Revelation. But all these different men 